With Destiny's body discovered, the parents begin to scramble to find themselves a new sacrifice, while the kids decide it's time to take steps to protect themselves. The power begins to shift on Marvel's Runaways, Season 1, Episode 4, 15. Hey everyone, D here, and welcome to our review, continuing reviews of Season 1 of Runaways. So yes, as usual, spoilers coming your way. Alright, so Episode 4 starts out with another little flashback here, this time two years ago, where we see the morning where Amy's body was discovered, and certainly the massive effect that that had on Nico completely understandable. Way, goes into her sister's room to find her cold, lifeless, sleeping pills uh, on the, the side table there. So, understandable her freak out. The real difference, the real dichotomy we of course have in this scene is how much her parents are not freaking out. Yes, Robert comes up and checks the pulse and everything like that. And kind of a standard thing. A little bit of worry in, in, in his face. But Tina, not really much of a reaction, very cold, certainly not the reaction really from either of them uh, of discovering uh, the body, the, the, the dead body of their child. Uh, so a lot of suspicion, of course, being waylaid here, compounded considering that uh, they don't want uh, Nico to call 911. In fact, Tina comes up with magic staff and takes her, uh, knocks her out lays her out, locks her up in her room. Uh, but of course, we get the appearance of our police detective. I mean, we don't see it now, but we know later on. Uh, getting paid off to take care of everything. So this is, you know, again, suspicions of what the actual cause behind Amy's death really starts to get heightened more and more uh, seeing this little flashback scene. Uh, but of course, what we're really seeing here is uh, uh, Nico reacting to this in the nowadays going through Amy's journal and really kind of discovering in that conversation with the kids and I loved the uh, the whole um, kind of FaceTiming there through Tina's computer through Tina's app there the, the whizzy multi-person uh, uh, FaceTime app basically uh, which which is interesting I mean it's, I think it's interesting Tina's got like her own little HAL 9000 going on inside of her house uh, but what Nico's expressing here is basically uh, going through Amy's diary. There is no depression. There is no sign that anything was wrong. There is no indication that this is a person who would kill themselves. So we're again building up here that there is something much more to Amy's passing from what we've seen. Especially, of course, since Amy's passing was again right after a pride meeting. But what we're seeing a lot through this episode is that transition of power. For the kids, they're kind of taking their power. The parents, kind of losing it in some way. Uh, certainly with Victor and Robert. Uh, Victor, of course, losing it. I mean, kidnapping that girl and just throwing in the back of the van, driving down the street, just turning up the radio to drown out her, her screams. Um, and then she's gone when he opens up. I mean, that's... That's got to kind of come back, right? He's not an unknown. He's kind of a famous person. You think his face might pop up and kidnap victims going to be like, that's the guy. So definitely not good. But what do they do? They still got to go back out and find another sacrifice. This is Victor trying to make up for the loss of destiny, but he screws that up. And so uh, Tina sending Robert out uh, to go help him. Which, of course, still doesn't go very well because <laughs> they can't even kidnap a knocked out homeless guy without them being attacked and the police showing up. So, really, not a whole lot of effectiveness here going on uh, uh, on the, the, the pride side of things. Um, Tina, on the other hand, 
starting to look, dig a little bit more into uh, Stacy and Dale, him not showing up for the emergency meeting. Um, of course, they're out trying to find their missing dinosaur, but that sort of instigates her investigation with her nice little tattooed info gatherer there um, to suss out what is going on, um, which obviously is going to kind of put a negative light on Stacy and Dale from the information that Tina seems to, uh, to have come up with. Even Leslie is getting it from Frank, who is now accusing her of cheating on him, uh, hanging out outside of the private meditation room. Um, so, I mean, it's good that Frank is kind of like stepping up here, but he doesn't really have the conviction behind his maneuvers. He's still very easily manipulated by Leslie, who all basically just have to say is, Oh, I've been praying on you going ultra. You wanted to be more part of the church. This is what you wanted, right? And so immediately that just sort of cracks down on Frank's uh, uh, investigation into things. The suspicion, at least for the moment, is going to waylay things. But like I said, the, the, the pride, in a bit of a scramble here with Destiny's, uh, with the sacrifice not working and now having to try and find something. In fact, my first thought is here is, is everybody looking to try and find a new sacrifice? Is that what, you know, Victor and Robert are actually, you know, obviously out trying to get a homeless guy, which doesn't work out too well. Uh, but I really had my suspicions that Leslie was setting Frank up to be a possible sacrifice. But I think that, that the 17 year old seems to be an important part of this ceremony. So probably safe for the moment. Maybe. But like I had said, on the kids' side of thing, really starting to take their power. Alex looking to go and investigate into the basement. I love, the coasters don't work anymore. That was a great scene when he goes to try and move it, and they just sort of fall apart. Uh, but in searching for an alternate entrance, he does find Dad's secret desk drawer hidden with the gun. And you can tell from that moment where he pulls it up and stands in the mirror and puts it up and everything, he's taking that power. He's trying to establish, see himself in that role, um, which is good in this sense because this gets him to, I think, motivates it. Well, I think seeing Gert and Carolina together, again, the team coming together here, grabbing their power, uh, Carolina and Gert, more supportive of what their parents are, uh, but seeing that kind of togetherness really motivates Alex to go and kind of back up Nico, who wants to go to the cops. Uh, now with everything, again, simple solution, but again, she's trying to take that power, trying to choose the directions that they're going in. Um, good that Alex did that. I love that scene where Nico's all very, you know, uncomfortable walking into the police station, and then just Alex steps up the, uh, right next to her. It's a beautiful scene, the teamwork. They're a great little couple together, actually. Um, but that motivation to sort of take that direction, make that choice happen, doesn't last too long when Nico sees the cop that she saw in the video in the beginning that had gone and shaken things up after Amy's death, guiding Robert and, uh, and Victor there through the police station. So with that, they're knowing they're definitely outgunned, um, in the sense of going for the cops. This is something that they are going to have to do. Uh, but Gert and Carolina, you know, establish, I like their, you know, again, I like all the little bondings that the characters are doing here. You know, they've been separated for so long in these past two years with Amy out, now starting to come together. Uh, a little bit of sisterhood there, which is nice. Uh, also enjoyed kind of Gert looking through Gaborum's stuff and going, hey, I know I give you crap for this, but there's some actual really nice stuff going on right here. You know, this is, this, this is a good thing. Um, so, uh, you know, I kind of like that little bits of power, you know, uh, establishing there. Of course, she kind of gets sent off when Chase shows up. Uh, <laughs> so a little bit of competition for attention is going on, and that's going to continue moving forward here. Oh, and of course, we have Carolina kind of taking her power in showing Chase uh, her whole glowy little bit, uh, which I thought was, was, was very cool. Again... Everything throughout this episode, people taking their power, accepting who they are. And also kind of appreciated Chase not taking that expected romantic moment to lean forward and kiss her uh, right then and there. 
kind of felt that that energy was going on, but uh, I, I thought it was good. I thought it was, again, respectful from Chase's point to maybe just accept what Carolina is showing him without it, that being an invitation to be something more. Uh, but we've got Molly trying to reach out to Catherine for answers on her parents. Again, in some ways trying to take a step, but maybe not the smartest thing. Yes, Catherine has offered to tell, Gert, or tell Molly more about her parents, uh, but knowing what Catherine and Jeffrey and the rest of the adults are after, is this really a, a, a direction to push? And not to mention the questions she's asking. What are my parents super strong? Did they do secret experiments on me? What happened the night my parents died? I mean, that's, those, you're supposed to subtly move into these questions, not just throw them out quite right like that. Um, but of course, interrupted by the appearance of our pet dinosaur, where we get a nice little face off with her and Molly before Gert comes in and we get the discovery of, the dino listens to Gert. So, <laughs> Again, we're establishing things. We're, we're getting things all of set up. We're, we're appreciating that stuff. Gert's still shutting down Molly there and talking about the whole strength things, which is hilarious. Um, and finally, Chase, deciding that he's really got to protect himself, working on his gloves, his fistagons. And I have to say, I really uh, appreciated that scene between him and his dad. Because what we're starting to see also here is kind of the, the humanization of these relationships. The kids have been at odds with their parents for so long. Here we're actually seeing, seeing Chase and his father sort of connecting over stuff. And, 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 and a scene that could have gone completely the other direction. Because Chase is scared of his father. He sees that and he's upset. You know, I knew you were going to break it as soon as you touched those. Um, but I, I think Victor here is starting to see the, the perils of his relationship, of his previous relationship with Chase, and, and here to be able to, to, to step up, to sit him down and just be like, tell me about these things. How do they make you feel when you're thinking about them? You know, I mean, really kind of diving into it, I think reflecting back into a lot, a lot of his own youthful, exploratory, you know, uh, 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 inventive mind. And now seeing that in his son, the fact that he could kind of step away from his obsession, especially after the bad day that he's had, uh, to sit with the son and actually kind of bond, and the fact that they can start to bond over these creation of, of, of these high-tech gloves, the fistagons, uh, I think was, was just awesome. Yeah, in fact, speaking of Chase, I really kind of like how his character's moving. Again, there's a lot of expectations that he's like, the dumb jock, uh, where he's actually this kind of secretly brilliant guy. But more to the point, how honorable he is, how much he really does believe in the right, in, in doing the right thing. The whole bit with the team, I gotta say, my favorite, my favorite moment of this entire episode uh, was when he's facing off with the team guys and he's trying to get him to apologize. Are you gonna apologize? No, are you gonna apologize for what you did? He's like, I'm not apologizing. I got a broken rib out of this. And Chase's light is, ah, well, good thing you got 23 more. Ah, just goes right into it. Oh, man, that was just hilarious. I got to say, good thing you got 23 more. That's going to be one of my favorite lines going forward. Um, and then, of course, him quitting the team after seeing all of this. One, he does have kind of more important things to do right now. Um, but willing to put that behind him. That he, well, I guess he does tell Carolinas. Maybe he's giving that up for something more important. Uh, it's good. Anyway, I, I love that. Um, and, I, and, and it was, you know, and, and as for getting to know things, um, Gert and Molly, after the whole dinosaur discovery and then the parents walking in right there, there was a moment where they almost got some answers. And this is where I like a lot of the back and forth, the dynamic action that's going on uh, and, and character movement in the show is because they almost get their answers. They almost get Dale and Stacy to tell them about what's going on. Um, but that lasts about a half a second until uh, Tina pops up and does the whole dump about their secret property in the Yucatan. She knows all about it. They're hiding money. And wasn't it nice that Molly's parents seemed to give this to you, will this to you, almost as a place to run? 
again, putting back on, 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 on Molly's folks right there, sort of inside and probably more of what happened and why what happened with them. Uh, and that certainly drops uh, Dale and Stacy there in a heartbeat. And all of a sudden, they're just yelling at the kids and sending them out. So you almost had a moment where Dale and Stacy were willing to be the, the better person that they seem to be. Of the whole group, they seem to be at least the more normalish, caring, compassionate, uh, but still willing to make those dark choices. But of course, the big discovery by the end of the episode uh, is the 15 kids, the 15 kids that have all been sacrificed over the years, all going through Gaborum. The parents are serial killers, and Leslie is the one choosing their victims. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, good stuff on Alex, man. Break it in. And Alex is brilliant with those computers, isn't he? Um, so, yeah, and that, that pretty much just spells it all out. Any, any haze, any discussion, any curiosity, could it go either way, is pretty much all ixnade at that point, uh, which would be a good time for the kids, the, group, the kids to get together, except, of course, Alex ends up getting kidnapped, and that's where we end the episode. All right, so, of course, that's going to wrap us up for this review. Thank you so much for joining me. And as usual, if you enjoyed it, please go ahead and hit that like button. Thoughts, ideas, comments, you know where to put them? Right down in the section below. Catch me on Twitter and Instagram right here at Darren Jakes. Subscribe with this button. Check out past reviews with these buttons. Smorgasbord of choices. All right, so that's it for me. I'm D, and I'm out of here. Catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.